Hey, get in here. Hey, you. No, get in our room. Yeah, you, come here. Come on, come on, come in. Come on, get in our room. Hey everybody and welcome to another week of Get In Our Room with Bobby and Kristen. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter. Yeah, happy Saturday. Happy Happy Saturday before Easter. <laughs> yeah, the day before Easter, which is why we're recording this on a Saturday and not a Sunday. Because I have a lot of family stuff to do. Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about underrated books and authors but before we get into that i want to know what kristen read this week i read the highest bidder the fifth book in the salacious by Bi- salacious players club series i didn't like it that was <laughs> so, yeah, it just came out, and it was the roughest one of the series for me, and I hope it, I hope Madam isn't like that, because that's supposed to come out, and I really want to know more about Eden. Yes, um, I was really bummed. They spent five books talking about Ronan Cade, kind of. He was always in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they made the whole book about Daisy, and he had, like, one, like, what, a handful of chapters that were from his perspective. Yeah. It was... I didn't like it. And then I didn't like the ending. And then I don't think I like the whole, like, artsy music thing. I don't know. To me, that feels cringe, him watching her play the piano. That's a personal (laughs) thing, though. That's nothing nothing that the author did wrong. That's just a personal thing. (laughs) Awesome. Is that the only thing you read? Kristen's drinking tea, so what you're hearing is Kristen <laughs> setting down her cup. <laughs> what you hear is Kristen not being a professional. <laughs> Could I have drank the entire cup before we started the live? Probably. Probably. But did I? No. <laughs> oh, good. Um, did I read it this week? I don't know. Time all fits together so well. Um, the Mindfuck series. Oh, yeah. Was I just... Was I just starting that or did I finish it? You were starting that remember. last week. <laughs> yeah, you were starting that last Sunday because you talked about how you read like two or three chapters. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. What a whirlwind it has been since then. I actually don't think I slept while I was working my way through those books. <laughs> uh, there's five of them and they're each about two to three hours which I just realized is upwards of 15 hours that I spent doing nothing <laughs> but reading these books. Fantastic from start to finish. I can't wait to write a review on them and get that posted. And I can't wait for Bobby to read them. Yeah. So we can do an episode about them. I need um, to I, read them. I do. I am not the type of person to hand out trigger warnings. Trigger warning. Every single kind you can imagine. Every. It's very graphic. It is a. It, it's a very tough read. It is very, it's written like criminal minds. Um, and they don't skimp on any of the details. They don't gloss over anything. Oh, interesting. Uh, that sounds like a series I actually need to buy for my older sister. She might actually read it. Very, it's very graphic, very extreme, very extreme in every aspect, right? It's about a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they explicitly explain a lot of uh, sexual assault, a lot of torture. Oof, a lot of murder. Oof. I don't. Yeah. Hope I, I want to read that, Kristen. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's it's very graphic. So great book. One of the, one of the books I think is actually the whole series. The whole series is, is probably some of the most well written material I've ever read in a very long time. But extremely graphic. Okay. Painful. Pain. It is painfully graphic. So. Okay. So, I'm trying to remember what I read this week as you were talking. <laughs> I was like, ah, dang, now I have to remember what I'm doing. Um, it's been a busy, busy week. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know I finished listening to the X Talk, and I, it's a rom com, and it's adorable. 
it's set in Seattle. Like the last two books I've read were like out in the Pacific Northwest. So, <laughs> um, and it's about someone who worked in public radio and then they started like this podcast for the radio show and like all this stuff. And it was just a super fun read. It was like Nemesis the force to work on a project together and stuff like that. So really good. And then I finished one of the series that I spoke about last week. And I'm trying to remember the name of the book. And I'm terrible at Kindle on my phone. Um, I don't remember how to look up my recently. But I finished this series and I, like I said, I can't remember what it, the name of the book was and who wrote it because it took me a long time to finish it uh the kingdom of frost and fear i think is what it is and it's the second or third book in this series and the plot is really good and they just threw a really good curveball into the last part of this book that i was struggling to get through and then they threw in some new characters that are really interesting to the storyline and now i'm like man i want to read it but the thing i don't like is that there's actually way too much um spice in it like yeah i don't know i'll probably end up reading it the next book when it comes out because i want to know how these other characters like truly fit into this like mystery that's happening and i'm kind of annoyed about it that i'm gonna end up wanting to read it because <laughs> i know it's gonna be a mess but I want to talk about how Disney kind of sucks. And <laughs> girl, so, we could go on for days about that. But yeah. We'll keep it short. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. And, yeah. So <laughs> I'm a Disney kid for sure. And, like, I like Marvel, and Disney owns Marvel, and we're going to be doing a show about me watching our segment, I'd rather be reading. The next show we're doing it on is The Punisher. So I started watching The Punisher last oh, night, guys. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Oh. But the Mindfuck series, I was going to tell you this, the Mindfuck series is pretty much uh, The Punisher reborn as a woman. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> now I want to read it again. <laughs> um, probably should just read it. Um, but recently, um, there is an executive vice president at Marvel Entertainment, and she was fired. Her name is Victoria Alonso, um, and she is um, a gay Latina. And... Disney said that she breached her non-contract for working on a project called Argentina 1945, which is a historical um, drama, that, and it was nominated for Best International Feature Oscar. But Disney, but she said that she actually had an agreement with Disney that it was okay to, do, to work on that project. And she thinks that she is being subject to discrimination probably rightfully so um <laughs> that the oh wait they wanted to release ant-man and wasp quantumanium in kuwait and kuwait has just locked down on all lgbtq plus in their legislation like it's very illegal there and now and she didn't want to blur out the the scenes from that movie to launch it in kuwait and now she's fired like i am slightly confused i have a short attention span especially on a saturday night <laughs> um how how does the film argentina 1945 tie in with ant-man and the wasp because she w worked on that project outside of Disney. And then it was nominated. Correct. Uh, okay. But there, she had asked Disney permission to work on the project. Mm -hmm. And they, they're saying that they didn't agree with her that she could do it. So 
Interesting. Yeah. And then they're using that as the excuse to fire her, but what was really happening in the background was she was very loud in some meetings saying, I'm not blurring out this stuff just so we can launch it in Kuwait. We're keeping the movie how it is. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. That was their excuse. Got it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is hard to explain. So thanks for thank following you. on that journey with me because it was hard to no, explain. No, thank you. Thank you for dragging me by the nose through that. <laughs> Anytime, I got you. Um, yeah. So Interesting. I can't, uh, I don't really know much about Kuwait, um, but I can't imagine they're that big of an audience. I, I could not tell you. What's the population of Kuwait? And if you hear my dog in the background, everybody, I'm sorry. Um, oh, 4.25 million people in Kuwait. That's substantial, but yeah. small for the world. I don't know. That's interesting that there's such big controversy over such a small, over such a small portion of the market. Do you ever feel like sometimes they stir controversy up like this just so that people will want to go watch the movie? But yeah, all of this, this whole storyline, it seems very, very uh, important, and I don't want to downplay that at all. But it also seems uh, very dramatic for a single scene in a movie related to a single market segment. And I think they're just trying to stir up controversy to get people to go watch the movie. And this is my opinion. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I do believe we're going to be wildly disappointed with the LGBT plus scene in the movie. I bet I bet it's as small as like two people holding hands and like not even noteworthy. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to watch it to see what they're referring to. I I would be curious to know. I think, yeah. I bet it's just very overdramatic to get asses in seats. Probably. Did you add this note in about the last thing he told me? Yes, I did. This is a book, the last thing he told me. This is a book I tried to do, a book club with my mom. Uh, so this is like right around the time that we were getting to know each other. And I was I like, remember mm, this. a book club with my mom and my two sisters, a sister-in-law and my sister. Um, and I don't remember who recommended this book. But we all suffered through it and then never <laughs> met for book club. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, and it was not a good book. No. Who's it by? So it might. Oh, that's such a great question. Um, I have no idea. But uh, based on the fact, like, it could be, last thing, uh, it's by Laura Dave. I don't think it was a very good book. But it might be a really good movie because it did possibly have a good storyline about like this father that like just disappears off the face of the planet to protect his daughter from like an unknown threat. Okay. So it definitely. I'm really had proud of you for your now spoilers during that whole thing. I watched you try really hard. <laughs> yes, I'm trying. <laughs> Because this is one of those really bizarre moments that I did not like the book, but I'm like, I think that could be a pretty good movie. So just wait and see. But I might actually go watch that movie, even though I did not like the book. It's not like they can ruin it from there. All right. So. Oh, yeah. Um, in the past couple of books, there's been a couple of books. I really love a good note from the author, right? Uh, there's a lot of books that have ones that are like, to, insert random name here, to my father who always believed in me. But there's been a couple, especially the one in the Mindfuck series. It is a beautiful note to the, to the audience about who this character is. And hmm. um, it's just, you know, is that a spoiler if I tell them what the, what the note to the author is? I have no idea. It depends on what's in the note. Like, it, you know what? If you appreciate a good note to the author, don't skip this one. Don't skip, if you read the Mindfuck series, don't skip the note to the author. 
read it every single time you start a new book. Every time you start in that series, reread it. It's it adds a lot. Um, the other one that I really enjoyed was that tangled in tinsel note to the author, which I actually posted mm -hmm. on our Instagram because I loved it so much. And it just adds a lot to the story in both cases. Right. It just interesting. I don't tell, know if I am. tells you that's the one where she was like, I purposefully did not describe the character oh, in this book yeah, so okay. that you can think that it's you. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, chef's kiss. Um, so yeah, over the past couple of, what is it, a couple of months, I've read some really good note to the authors that I feel like really bring a lot to the story or like put you in the right frame of mind to get into that story. Even though Tangled in Tinsel was a silly little smut erotica, <laughs> like it wasn't anything serious. But it just puts you in that right frame of mind and, you know, an intention from the author other than that, like, here's to my third grade teacher for spell teaching me how to spell salacious. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's, yeah, I've just been thinking on that all week, so. Okay. <laughs> that's hilarious. Our topic, you know, this week is underrated books, underrated authors. Um, so I wanted to start out this part of the segment into reading the definition of what underrated is. So by definition, underrated is not rated or valued highly enough. So I think that these are actually probably rated pretty high, these books and authors associated with the books to like, the people who have read them, but I don't think that many people actually know about them and have the opportunity to read them because they're not something you see on um, like TikTok, like mainstream because everyone's doing what's trendy and whatnot. So. Pandering to the masses. Correct. Yeah. And my series is, well, it's, it's an author, truly, because I've written, I've read, written? Nope, that's not even right. So I also listened to them, so I didn't read anything. <laughs> 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 um, but her name is Melanie Sellier, and she has the Spoken Mage series and the Hidden Mage series. She has a lot of other stuff, too, actually. She has a lot of upcoming releases for this year, even. Um, I think she has four books set to come out this year. It's kind of wild. I have a silly question for you. What's up? What is a mage? I like a wizard. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, female or male. So, the spoken mage is said about, there's this whole magic world, like, with like different classes and different levels of magic and different types of magic. And there's a school that you go to and it t this peasant girl ends up going to this school and like having a different form of the same types of powers and they're stronger. Um, so she's going to this school and there's several books in each of these series, but then the Hidden Mage series happens 18 years later and is about her daughter going to Ooh, the same school and, so, like, learning her magic because her magic is also very different. Um, so they're just really good. And there's one book. She came out with, like, a book to transition. She added, like, a little novella type thing. It's, it's a full book, but it's kind of, like, a little story to help you with something that happens 20 years down the road um, or 18 years down the road in the next series. So she came out with that. And she just has a really beautiful world that she's built with this magic. She has a lot of other books that are actually retelling of traditional like fairy tales like Cinderella. I think she has an Aladdin one. So she does retellings as well. 
But I found out when I was checking out her website, and her website is just her first and last name, and it's actually, she's coming out with book one, two, and three of a new series called A Mage, A Mage's Apprentice. And so I'm wondering if she's going back to write about that same type of world that she's created in like an adjacent story again, because they're really, they're really interesting because she does a really good job with the magic and stuff like that. Sorry, my dog is sitting underneath the table. <laughs> he's super, he's super loyal, very clumsy. <laughs> I get that. I mean, I just had to let mine out of the room, so it is what it is. Um, quick question. For these authors that build these worlds, um, I already forgot the author that you're talking about currently. Her name is um, Melanie Selier. Melanie? Melanie. Good old Mel. Uh, but authors like Melanie, S.J. Mass, I mean, you could go so far as like Tolkien and J.K. Oh, yeah. Rowling. Yeah. Do you think that they just have sticky notes all over their walls to keep the world straight? Or do you think that these people just like actually part time live in that world and don't? I think they like... have a lot of notes, <laughs> a lot of notebooks, and like, probably like a Charlie, wall of sticky notes. Like Charlie Day. Was it Charlie Day with all the, the red string? And he's like pointing to the wall, trying to like with a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like I was looking at him, and I was like, "We've all had that cigarette moment. <laughs> like that is the quintessential cigarette moment." <laughs> but yeah. Do you think they all have very extensive notes on the world? Oh and... gosh, yes. I don't even know how the SGM does it. She has this whole theme of seven, the number seven, and she's calling a lot of attention in, into it with the last book she read. And it's just, yeah, if you're in the middle of reading that series, which the girl on the plane next to me on my way home from Newark, um, I, she was starting Akatar. I had a little conversation <laughs> about it. I saw her Kindle and I was, like. Was, was that, <laughs> was that your cigarette moment? <laughs> <laughs> that was like, you know, the, how do you take your Negroni woman? That woman, that was that moment for me. I'm like, oh, so. <laughs> what about that? <laughs> Bobby's trying so hard to keep her crazy eyes in her head. <laughs> I showed her my notes about my theories. <laughs> did Did you yell at her to read faster? No, I did ask did her where she got her? to on the flight. <laughs> like, so where are you at? Where'd you end up? <laughs> Just waiting for Bobby to lean over and whisper, "Read faster." <laughs> I'm doing that to Kristen and my um, other best friend, Paige. It is, uh, you're both at different places and neither of you are at a good place. And I'm just like, oh, you guys need to finish all these books because when the next book comes out in January, I'm probably not going to be able to keep my mouth shut anymore. I told <laughs> her and you, you both had to finish all SGM before December. How many, I, I, I'm pretty sure I asked, how many books is that? Uh, cause you're on what book right now in Akatar series? Silver, silver flame. flame. Yeah. So I don't know the titles. I just know the co color of the cup. There's Throne of Glass, which is seven. I know it's the color. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's Throne of Glass series book one through seven, but there's also five novellas. I read them at the very beginning. <laughs> So it's eight books. It's like 4,560 pages. And I so, read it. Wait, 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 wait. Total for seven books and five novellas? Correct. Because I bought also the bundle plus, on my Kindle and that's what it was telling seven, me. Seven plus five is not eight. What? You said there was eight total. But seven plus five. No, no, no. Five novellas there in one book. They're short stories in oh. one book. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're they're like chapter, okay, right, okay. like few chapters. That's all it is. And so I'm sorry. Yeah, that was confusing. Apologies. <laughs> but <laughs> I already told you I'm not all here on a Saturday night. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not either. Jake said he was gonna make me a 
um a oh what's it called an espresso martini but we also he also tangent story here guys sorry um (laughs) he also (laughs) bought a bunch of parts for our bmw so before i was in here and i was running a little late (laughs) also (laughs) unprepared um is because we were looking at all the parts he bought for the bmw that we're both really excited about he got me a t-shirt so um yeah so I don't think he's come back in from the garage now <laughs> to make that drink. <laughs> so, um, Are they all, oh, how do I ask this without it launching into a tirade about cars? I'm not really a car person. Are they parts that make it pretty or functional? Both. Because we're well, vain and anyways. practical. <laughs> <laughs> vain and practical. What are are the things that make it pretty? I don't really care. Uh, And you probably wouldn't notice this, but like when you (laughs) open the hood, there's like a cow. It's called a cowl. It's where like your, um, it's a plastic thing where your end of your windshield meets where your hood comes down and and into your engine bay. That's like got a gasket on it. It's all cracked and it's gross. And so we bought a new one. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you didn't know that, you're just stupid. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, that's okay. But that's like one of the pieces that's not super functional, but it's going to look really sharp. Like the small details look sharp. So um, he got that. And I, he's like, I agreed with him. He's like, it was only like 150 bucks. I was like, hell yeah, spend that 150 bucks. That's a good 150 bucks. Um, but anyways, and then... There are the two Crescent City books, which are giant. Um, And I just special ordered the Barnes & Noble special edition paperbacks that are coming out in September. I pre-ordered those the other day. But yeah, so you... special, special paperbacks of the Crescent City of a book that you've already read? Two books I already read. The first book and the second book. Oh, I like your style. Yeah. I will probably reread them. That's the thing, though. And so then this new book coming out in January is a Crescent City? Correct. Oh. It's the third one. Cool. So it's going to be huge. It. I'm scared. <laughs> That's what she said. Because, like, these... <laughs> <laughs> uh, mature audience only. Um... <laughs> We do have that warning turned on. So. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, anyways, we can bring it back to our actual topic here now that we went on two different tangents. So, who do you want to talk about? Girl, you know, you know, mostly because we share this, mostly because we share the same show notes, but. Um, <laughs> Also, I'm doing CJ Archer. Uh, she is obviously recommended to me by Bobby. She has several series. I think she has quite a few. Um, mm-hmm. I am currently working through the Glass and Steel series. It's a Victorian fantasy. Um, it's set in England. Some of the characters, like what, four or five of the characters, are Americans living in England. Yep. And I couldn't quite remember. Is it the 1870s or the 1890s? It is actually the 1860s. (laughs) No, that wasn't one of the options. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, ooh, I can try to remember. Because I just finished the um, last library book one, which is a spinoff that happens 28 years later. In 1912. So whatever that math is, guys. I think it's 12. It's <laughs> after the war. So maybe it's 1920. So oh, then yeah. it, you're right. It would be the 1890s then. Right, math? Mm, guys, it's Saturday evening. It's the late 1800s. Yes, it's good. Um, I think they just have... It's uh, it's a super easy read. It's what, young adult fiction? Yeah. So there's nothing... Yep. There's nothing... Uh, there's extreme. a romance, but it's not crazy. I'd let like yeah. a preteen read it for sure. They have like they're great characters. They're um, 
I think well developed. The majority of them. Um, it's a nice, easy. I think it's a very casual read. Mm -hmm. Some people, as I was looking through reviews, some people thought it was a very intense. Couldn't put it down. Um, <laughs> but I love it as a as a little palate cleanser, especially in between uh, the Akatar series. Yeah, <laughs> it's like read one of those, read one of these, and it's just like. It flows nicely. There's not like they do all the wrap ups at the end of all those details for you. So if there's anything that I might have missed, <laughs> they wrap that up for me. Uh, it's a fun little story with uh, it's magic. It's magicians. Uh, they have their own type of magic in like each trade or field that they're in. So you have like a watchmaker's magician, a map maker's magician. And that's kind of like but it's in a world where people don't want magicians. So it's um, a lot of unexpected turns that keep keep it interesting, but also, you know, yeah. I think it's easy. It's fun, easy read. It is. And so, nope, go ahead. <laughs> I was like, who's going to chicken out first? <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, my favorite thing can I take a second to say my favorite thing about that series? I'd be offended if you didn't. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, the character relationships and character development in the Glass and Steel series, and really in a, almost all of the books that I've read from C.J. Archer, it's amazing. It's amazing what she can do with characters and how elegant she makes their relationships work together and for her story. And it's, oh, it's really, really, I think it's really good writing. And she is an, a self-published independent author and she does everything. So, I mean, she's probably got an editor or something too. I'm not exactly sure, but she is in Australia and she, I... I'm a huge fan of CJ Archer. I did not realize she was Australian. I don't know cool. if she is Australian. I just know she lives in Australia. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I think because I thought it said something about her moving at some point. Oh, that's even cooler. I want to I go live in a different country and write books. Yeah, I think it'd be, she's living my dream, man. <laughs> I say that, but every but time she I does the work, down, man. She's doing the work. Good for her. <laughs> like she takes, she deserves every moment of that. Right. Every time I, I'm like, I'm gonna write a book. I have an idea, and then I sit down and I forget every word I've ever known in the English language. Yeah. Um. So this this author in particular, actually, this series. I don't know a lot. Of, I'm gonna touch on her other couple of series, but so this one, I feel like C.J. Archer is really underrated. Because there's no fan fiction, nor is there any mm. fan art. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Great story, no no spin-offs of the characters, which they're well developed and they have great storylines, so I'm not totally sure where the fan fiction would go. Because I think I we touch on this almost every week. Twilight mm. has a ton of fan fiction. Nice. Fun characters, terrible storyline. Easy to write fan fiction off of that. <laughs> But I think C.J. Archer, I don't think she'll have a lot of fan fiction because her characters are well-developed. They have fun mm -hmm. storylines. They have a lot of storylines. But I'm really bummed. I have, I'm not very artistic. So I'm really bummed that I can't find any fan art of yeah. Glass and Steel. Yeah. But yeah, speaking of being self-published, she's got two books coming out. I didn't write down the day. This year. Sometime this year. Last um, library comes out um, September, and Cleopatra Fox comes out. Where's my phone? I have no idea where I put my phone, y'all. Found it. Um, comes out. Oh, I can't remember. I did know. Watch it. While you look it up, I'll just talk about the Glass Library. Um. So as Bobby said, there's there's only two books in that series, but it's a spinoff of the Glass and Steel series. Um, and I am super excited to work my way through that, through the Glass and Steel series, and then bounce over to here. Um, mostly because I just love the name, the Medici Manuscript. Mm -hmm. I am a huge, 
I wouldn't say a huge history buff. I was about to, but I wouldn't. I would round it down to a mediocre history, not so buff. <laughs> but I've always loved the Medici's. And so the name, I just like the name more than anything. So, so and then obviously, who, does, who doesn't love Cleopatra? So a Cleopatra Fox series, I have no idea what it's about, but I'm in. Yeah. It's, that one's super cute. I... That one's so cute. Uh, <laughs> I there's a character that's in that series that he rivals the Glass Men because the Medici manuscript um, follows their bloodline, right? So, um, he he, right? Yeah, I really like a character, the male character in Cleopatra Fox. He's adorable. He's like, he's awesome. So, have you found? Oh, sorry. sorry. No, you're good. I was, I thought I found it, but I I didn't find when it's gonna come out. The second book. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, have you found any fan art for either of those two series? Mm -mm. Nothing. Yeah, me neither. So she continues to be wildly underrated. Yeah. Uh, September 5th, I found it. So that's, is the Medici manuscript? No, that's already out. The third oh. book is coming out, and it's called on The Untitled Books, The Glass Library, Book 3. Book 2 just came out um, in February. I read it in a day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, just easy, fun reads, you know? Yeah, they're really they're really good. Again, really good magic world building and like it's good. So the Cleopatra Fox series book 6, Murder at the Crown and Anchor, that comes out in September? Uh no. That comes out June 6th. That comes out first. June 6th. Yep. Ooh, I'm excited for that, that one too. <laughs> Because the other, the book five left off on a, like, a little bit of a heartthrob situation. So I'm a little panicky Ooh. about my characters <laughs> and the, that I love. And I'm like, oh, no, I need to know what happens to them. Is he going to, are they going to, oh, no. Oh, I'm a little no. worried about that one. So I'm ready to read <laughs> what happens next. Yeah. Two, I mean, and then there's another series by CJ Archer. That is actually about a spirit medium. It's a trilogy. Yeah. Ooh. She's a spirit medium and she's haunted by this ghost. And you will never guess how that third book will end. Like, <laughs> it's so crazy how it ends. It's very good. Interesting. All right. Well, now I'm hooked on CJ Archer. Yeah, you're right. There's just too many books yes so, there truly is there's a lot to get through and mm -hmm. you know you just can't you just can't read faster i don't know about know. you when you get like really into a book and then you start trying to read faster and then you realize you're not comprehending it and then your eyes start skipping to the bottom of the page and then you're like no focus I, you know what I do when I read? I get so excited about something that's happening on the happening on the page up, like half, like a quarter of the way down the page or halfway through the page. I like skip down and like yell at myself and have to like go back, <laughs> stop reading, and I'll put my hand over it so I can't skip down and I read it. Like, that yeah. is how I get so excited about stuff. I'm like, <gasps> I like don't don't spoil yourself. Like, I really encourage everybody to go check out both of these authors and. I have turned a lot of people on to the <laughs> CJ Archer and who have then turned other people on to CJ Archer and it is it's good. It's well liked to those who you uh, tell to read. That I forgot which week it was that I was like, oh yeah, my mom loves that series and now she's working through that series, the Glass and Steel series. Mm-hmm. They're out camping and they didn't have very good cell service. And she was like, all I heard was like, oh, yeah, I told my mom. And then it cut out. Oh. So she immediately calls me. She's like, why were you talking about me? What did you <laughs> say about me? <laughs> That's funny. Um, anyways, mom, if you're watching. 
that you really enjoy the glass and Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad you are. So what do you, before we sign off for the week, um, what are you currently reading then? I am currently reading, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for my Kindle to load. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm currently bouncing back and forth. So at the beginning of this year, this is going to be way more long-winded. I'm listening. So at the beginning of the year, I challenged myself that I was going to read like 50 books. Um, however, I was going to split that between 15 minutes of reading in the morning of like nonfiction. I don't want to say self-help, but self-help. Yeah. Um, and then in the evening. Self-development. You can call it self-development. Yeah, self-development. Yeah. That's a better word. Yep. I have not been doing that. <laughs> I told myself. I have been. <laughs> I, had to, I love this because <laughs> I told myself for every, I have to read one for one for one in fiction and nonfiction. Yeah. And I have finished <laughs> half of two like self-development style books and I haven't finished them. So yeah. So I'm trying to get back on that bandwagon. Um, it's not really a self. I don't know if this counts as self development. Have you ever heard of the author Robert Greene? He does the Forty Eight Laws of Power, the Thirty Three Strategies of War, and the Laws of Human Nature. Yeah, so you've heard of them. They're, yeah, I've never read them. I didn't know. Like, yeah. So I'm trying to get through. I actually ordered. I decided to order them in paperback so I could make notes and highlight because. They're not really, you can read them cover to cover, but they're not really designed. They're more of like textbooky. Okay. Like that you don't really like, he's like, you can read them cover to cover, but they're more like reference books that you're supposed to like. Utilize when dealing with time, yeah. Yeah, when you're dealing with like diff difficult personalities or hmm. people or stuff like that, you're supposed to like reference them. So I'm trying to work through the laws of human nature for 15 minutes in the morning, but it just gets my brain working so much that I read like a paragraph and my mind starts wandering. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's not difficult. It's just, it sparks a lot of thought. Oh, okay, cool. Does that make? Yeah. 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 I go so, and do like a spiral with thoughts I mean, I called you on my way home from the airport. I would spiral, <laughs> just going down. Yeah. And yeah, talked me off that ledge. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> like, oh my God, Kristen, am I a bad person? <laughs> She's like, no, no, Poppy. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, okay. Usually, usually you can tell that if you're asking if you're a bad person, that's usually a sign that you're not a bad person. Yeah, I guess. I just... Self-reflection is a powerful tool. Yeah. Yep. Um, the other book I'm reading, and I don't think I'm going to finish it, is um, I've been seeing it all over TikTok. Okay. Uh, Kiss of Death, A Dark Gods and Monsters Fantasy. Oh, I don't it's, know. I probably have, but it's probably... It's a super slow start. I'm 20% of the way in, and I just... I don't know about it. Oh. Something better happen fast, otherwise... Going in the chuck it bucket. Chuck it bucket. Um, <laughs> what are you up? What are you up to this week? So I am reading. Is this book what number is it? So I'm reading a Kingdom of Venom in Vows is book three in um, Stars and Shadows book series. So the. First book is called The Kingdom of Stars and Shadows. The second one is A Kingdom of Blood and Betrayal. And then this third one is A Kingdom of Venom and Vows. Ooh. I think it's a, just going to be a trilogy. But she doesn't have anything listed as coming out. And I'm on the third book. I'm probably 60% of the way through it. And it's good. It's good. It's There's... This one was a little different in the beginning but i was happy that it hit my kindle and i could read it again because i was like 
And I, and the thing is, like, I, another one hit my Kindle, and I can't remember the first book, because that's how long I've waited for it. So that one's giving me anxiety, and this one, like, makes me feel good, because I actually remember what this one's about, and I remember that, what happened in the first two books. So, really, I'm just enjoying it, because I remember the whole storyline. <laughs> Because I get stuck in these series, and I... They take up all of your time. Yeah, and then I'm reading, like, 17 different series, and they all have books, like, on their way out, and I'm like, oh, oh I'm screwed. That's what that means. Because <laughs> anything on my TBR list gets gets bumped down further if that's available. Like, I'll yeah. just read those first. So that's what sucks. So I don't get out of my own little hole that I dig myself into. <laughs> I know, and then thanks to TikTok and Instagram, it's there's so worse. Uh, an endless supply, and yeah. all of those all of those creators they do such a good job. Like this kiss of kiss of death, I don't know, I can't remember the name of it. All I can remember is that this girl put together such a beautiful little montage of these creepy pictures of like I guess, I guess death. I don't I don't even know yet, but the montage was so good I was hooked. Now I'm bummed. It's not a very good book. <laughs> You know, it is a good montage. My aesthetics video for First Sin and Saints on on Instagram. That one's good. Yes. That one's actually really think, good. And nobody like the... fucking seen it because Instagram sucks and it flops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out. It's such yes, bullshit. But I think I like your TikTok song better. The TikTok song is better. I pulled them straight. I, but the thing is, I wanted to test it out by pulling straight from different apps themselves and it's like all of this stuff is such a big learning curve and it's like i know people got it figured out but i want to this is how you figure it out and some days it is not fun to figure it out <laughs> and it's just like what well, yeah. that sucks that took a lot of time but what i think i'm gonna people... do is um just take the tiktok one and post it Yay. ig yeah even with the watermark on it I know people really hate this word, probably. I don't know for sure. Um, but TikTok and social media, it just seems like a lot of pandering, right? You just got to find what's already popular. There's not a lot of yeah, trend setting. Yeah. Basically, it's a lot of fun. To oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> I am having fun, though. Like, overall, I'm having fun, and it's interesting to learn. Um, and I like what I make, so even though it flopped, it's like it's gonna stay, it's gonna exist because it's it's good. I like it. It's so yeah, it'll get popular at some point when somebody goes back and binges our entire page. Yeah, that's fair. But did you hear that random knocking? I did not, Kristen. You're freaking me out though, man. Sometimes I forget I live in an apartment and other people are so close. Uh, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> so next week's episode is about fan fiction. I have mine picked Ooh. out. I'm excited for it. I have to read it. I've had it picked <laughs> out for a week and a half because I was anxious about this show, the fan fiction one. So I was like, I found it a week and a half ago and I have been finishing up those other books and stuff. But I'm going to read it this week and I'm excited. So <laughs> the uh, one of the episodes that never made it to air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was us reading fan fiction as non trained vocalists, narrators? Both. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> I will pull Smutty some bloopers from that show. <laughs> no. But there's never going to be that full show launch. Someone's paying me a lot of money for that one. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> that was that was another one where I'm like, I wonder if the people around me in my apartment can hear me screaming smut <laughs> into a microphone. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited. So now, now we read it and then tell you guys about it instead mm -hmm. of reading Synopsis, it for yeah. you. Anyway, I don't read the same type of clips as I read during that conversation or snips from, from it. I highlight other things. <laughs> But, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that one. It'll be good. Do you have an idea of what type of fan fiction um, you want to go after this time? Or are you going to just surprise us? I'll see it in the show notes. So you're surprising them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, if anybody knows me, so Bobby, it'll probably be supernatural fan fiction. Okay. Well, I try to venture out. <laughs> Kristen well, is a creature of habit. <laughs> Remember that like whole like there's so much to read type of like conversation we just had 12 seconds ago? That's yeah. what it is with supernatural fan fiction. There is so much of it. All right. Can so, you hear that? No, is it your dog? Yeah. That's hilarious. So we will be back next week for fan fiction and some news and to talk about what we've been reading. And if anybody wants to give me ideas of not supernatural fan fiction, feel free to send those ideas over on Instagram or TikTok or yes, email, anywhere you can find us. If you want to leave comments in the YouTube video about what fan fiction you want me to read and review? <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be supernatural. <laughs> Some way to help us all out and make a comment. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you so much, and have a good rest of your weekend. Enjoy your Easter, um, and we'll see you next time. Toodles!